Okay, laws of exponents. We talked about yesterday we had the product rule. I'll do another one of those today. I'm in fact I'm gonna make one that's a little more challenging so just so you can see it. We'll talk about the powers of power rule, and then we're gonna talk about um, scientific notation. We're gonna probably spend the most time today on scientific notation. Now I know those can be problems in this that can be challenging. I understand that because they're new and there's a lot of things you have to do. But the scientific notation stuff is is newer, and I need to make sure that you know how to do it. Isn't this what we did yesterday? Yeah, so it's the same outline. So oh, today is what you're going to get homework on them. So, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just want to make sure that you know how to do it. Because scientific notation, like, unless you've taken, what, chemistry or physics or whatever, that you've actually seen that before, it can be challenging because I'm going to make you multiply and divide with it, and you have to know the rules for it. So I just want to make sure you're comfortable with it. Yeah, it's the same outline as yesterday, but I want to go through a couple problems, make sure that you know it before I give you homework today. Questions before we start, though? That was good. Okay, let's jump right in. Let's talk about, I want to give at least one kind of challenging problem. All right, 5x. Uh, six. have some time to write that down. Again, I'm just doing some big problems right off the bat. We're going to talk about product rule, we're going to talk about powers of powers. The next example I'll do is I'll do a negative exponent problem where you have to move things around and simplify that thing out. And the last two or three problems we're going to need will be all scientific notation to make sure that you are comfortable with what I'm going to ask you to do. You will want a calculator today. As you can tell, this number gets insanely big. It's going to be big, real big. Anytime you go to powers, the numbers can jump incredibly fast. So you have to trust your answers today. You have a calculator, Carl? Yeah, there's one I think on my desk, actually. Let's put it away. We got more. There's more in the back. It's underneath the cell phone caddy thing. You'll see it down there. It's a little cubby of them. That's why I got them back there. It's right behind the cell phones. You'll see it when you turn the corner. On the other side. There you go. I need to put it maybe on the top shelf. Maybe. Just make sure I get those two back. And let's get a little practice with this, and then when we feel comfortable, we'll move on to the next one. Okay. Yeah, this uh, the number you're going to get, the leading coefficient, the final answer is going to be a six-digit number. It's big. Any more time? Some more still writing. 
Okay, here's my question before we start. Is your answer going to be positive or negative? Positive. positive. How do we know? You're correct. How do we know? You an exponent, right? On that negative 12, there is a 4 outside the parentheses. That will cancel the negative sign. I think we talked about that yesterday. They'll cancel the negative signs. So you're going to get a positive answer. Okay, just, remi just a reminder. This, writing it like this, is different than writing it like this. There's a clear difference. This one is what you're dealing with. The, tr the negative signs inside the parentheses, so you're going to just read 4, the negative sign will go away. Bless you. On the top one, this is saying that you need to find the 12 to the 4th power first, and then you put a negative sign out front. I know it seems weird, but it, the lack of parentheses make a big difference. All right, uh, let's walk through. The, let's do, just do one parenthesis at a time, because uh, that's kind of what you have to do. We distribute the 2. What did somebody get? Tell me the number. 25. Good. Keep going. X to the second, or X to the fourth. Yep. Yeah. Y to the 6. Y to the 6, good, because you have to multiply the powers. Because you're, when, it, when you're assuming that power goes, that's a power rule. Okay, power powers rule. Okay, next parenthesis, thank you. Somebody else did? That was good. 20,736. Okay, and that was big, just 12 to the 4th. Keep going. X to the 4th. Good. Y to the 28th. Good. And W to the 4th. Good. Yeah, you got big. Like I told you, like, it was just a fourth power. Fourth power. It's not even that big, right? When you think about it, but it went to 20,000 instantly. It's huge. Just because of the, it's 12, it's a two digit number. So you're taking 12 times 12 times 12 times 12, times 12 right? Four of them. Okay, that was good. Thank you. Now, comes the fun part. Now we've got to multiply the big numbers together and add up everything else. So, somebody with the final answer. Final digits. Stay out there. What do you have? It's 25 times the 20,000 number. It's too early in the morning to ask questions, I guess. 518,400. 1,400, good. So it was six digits, that's good. I agree, keep going. X to the? Eight. Eight. Y to the? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. We have what W to the fourth. There's no other Ws. And again, you can put the letters in any order. Some people are like really like sticklers for like alphabetical. It doesn't really make a difference. It's commutative, so I don't really care what letters or what order you put it in, as long as the powers are correct. Okay. Now, to me, like that's probably way more difficult than what the book is going to give you, which is fine. So if that went fine for you, good, perfect. Uh, it's just one of those things like you need to be ready for that type of stuff. Like this, when we get to some project later this year, like that'll be small compared to what we're going to be doing. So uh, let's move on. Let's, uh, let's go to the negative x ones now. So, so the next problem, we have a fraction here: negative five x y to the negative eight z to the negative second. Uh, we're going to put a fifteen. X to the negative 4, Y, Z to the negative 6, and this is all the negative second power. Okay, I'll give you a couple minutes for this one. I try to make little tails my Z, and you can't tell. Again, I just want to do one of these to make sure we're comfortable. They kind of went overboard. There are negatives everywhere. Okay. I don't have any zero exponents on this one. Again, you can do these different ways. Still get the same answer.
Some people are still writing. This one does take a while just because the mechanics that are involved here. Um, without starting, how many people distributed first? Distribute the power first. Okay. Okay. Select few. And then I take it the other people just started some fine, like canceling stuff out and moving stuff around. Okay. Doesn't matter how you do it. My little rule is that I always follow is I always distribute first. The reason being is that if you have a bunch of negative powers on the inside and the outside, what will happen is you'll start moving stuff around, and when you distribute later, you're going to have to move them back, especially if it's a negative power on the outside. Um, I, I just want you to ever think that you have to do a problem like, because I've definitely seen people like take this problem and try something like this, where they put the huge block on the bottom of like the number one. I've seen that before, where you know it has a negative exponent right too, but then they move it to the bottom of like their own fraction because there is a big one on the bottom of this. So it's a fraction, and then they moved it, and then what they do is they have a fraction in here, and then they have to do like a reciprocal layer. Yeah, that's a that's crazy. I wouldn't do something like that. So um, I'll definitely say that if you're that person that simplifies it first, it might actually be easier for you, um, just because the numbers would be smaller. If that makes sense, the numbers would be smaller. But you, it's going to be the same answer in the end. I'm I'm usually the person that will distribute first. Just because I like the negative signs all cancel out sometimes. So uh, that's why I'm going to do it. But the answers in the end should be the same. But if you did simplify first, you know I have x to the fifth on the top, you'd have y to the ninth, z to the fourth on the top, or something like that. And then you have a 1 over 3. So if you're that person that simplified it first. Uh, but I'm going to distribute. So we have is it positive 25? Um, and that would be on the bottom one there on the bottom of your fraction. So positive 25. The reason being is I'm going to distribute the, the negative 2 to here. So it'll be a negative 2 on the fifth. So I'll make that a 25. But since it has a negative power, I'll move it down. And then negative 7 would cancel. Because it is a negative 5 that you are squaring. So the 25 would be on the bottom. The 15 would go to the top. And 15 squared is 225. OK, questions on the numbers out front, the leading numbers. Now, I'm not, I haven't simplified that number yet. But that's just moving them. Um, moving x to the negative 2 down, x to the 8th will stay down there. x to the 2nd will be here, x to the 8th will be joining it. Um, now, how that works, this became a negative 2, so I had to move down. This was a negative 4, and negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. So they're on the same level now. Um, this will become a y to the 16th, just 2 times 8. And this will be a y to the 2nd, but it will be going up. So it had a negative 2 on it. So y, y to the 16th and y to the 2nd. We'll join it. z to the 4th, z to the 12th. Now, do I recommend somebody doing it like that? Probably not. I'm trying to do it in my head. Sometimes I can get messy. But I'm just trying to get down to the final answer. Do you agree that numbers are really big now? Or at least the terms are. That's why simplifying can be helpful, but for me, I don't like to move things around if I don't have to. Now, simplifying 225 divided by 25. Uh, what is that? 9? You said? 9's on the top, 1's on the bottom. You divide them both by 25. Uh, the y's will make 18. The z's will make 8 on the bottom. And there'll be 10 x's down. So we're good. Final answer. Now, 
would I would my work if I was doing the homework just like you guys are? Would my work look like that? Probably not. Definitely not. Because I'm that person that when I distribute, I just leave all the numbers where they're at. Negative five with a negative two on it. X to the negative two. Y to the sixteen. Z to the fourth. And then down here I write fifteen to the negative two. X to the eighth. Y to the negative two. Z to the twelfth. Then my next step would probably be that one. I'd move things around then. I'm just trying to get down to that final answer quickly. Question? Yes. Okay. Where did Z to the eighth? Um, there was a Z to the fourth on the top. Yeah. And a Z to the twelfth on the bottom. So what I did is I just took four from each. Oh, okay. okay, so it's just the cancellation, okay. right? Reason why, yeah. That was correct, right? See the eighth. Okay. That was good. Any other questions? Perfect. Okay. Last two prompts. I only have two prompts. I'd like to go through, and then I'll give you time where you can actually work on your assignment because I did promise you that. I want to go through a a scientific notation problem where we're multiplying really big numbers together. So. For instance, now I know you can do these on your calculators, but let's go 31,200, and we're going to take it times, um, let's take it times 2,000. Now, most people can do this in their head. I'm going to try to, we're going to work through this using scientific notation. So we're going to multiply two numbers together using scientific, scientific notation. Hopefully, no calculator is necessary. Okay, so the first step, we have to get these numbers in scientific notation in the first place. So can somebody convert the 31,000 into scientific notation, please? Uh, 3.12 times 10 to the fourth power. Oh, boom, there you go. Okay, I like the way they did it. You put the decimal behind the first number on the left, so behind the three, that's the farthest number on the left. And then you just had to count how many spots did you move? You moved it four. So this, is, this number was larger than the number one, like one dollar. It has a positive four on it. Okay, that was good. Next one. Some other person. <coughs> two times ten to the third. Two times ten to the third. And again, you could have put two point oh, but two is fine because the decimal's after. Makes sense on how we converted it. Okay. And now what we can do is we can multiply. Now I know, like I think that was kind of an easy number. I probably wouldn't necessarily have to do this, but I'm just trying to pick numbers that you can easily kind of check. When we actually multiply here, and you put the tens in the back, because this is just multiplying. Every item here is being multiplied together, because there's all multiplication between. What I think of is that these are just like variables. I throw them in the back. It's like x to the fourth and x to the third. Like, I just throw them in the back. That's just how I think of it. So I'm going to be putting the 3.12 out front times 2, and then the times 10 to the fourth and times 10 to the third just get thrown in the back. And what I can do is now I can multiply. So if I take 2 times 3.14, I get 6.24. You actually multiply those together. And then the tens in the back, since the tens have the same base, you can just add the power, so there's seven of them. So there you go. And if you need to go back to the original number, you just move it back, the decimal back seven spots. Questions on, you know, how to multiply um, scientific notation numbers. Okay, if the answer comes out kind of goofy, because maybe you're, you know, you're multiplying these numbers out front, and so I'm going to make up a number here, so this is not your answer, but if, if you're multiplying random numbers, and let's say it came out to be something like this, 47.68, and you had all the tens in the back, and they combined to make five of them, or something like that. Like that, maybe that was the answer after you did this like weird multiplication and you added tens. This isn't an improper set scientific notation because the decimal is in behind the first number on the left. So the shortcut is you just move it over one more spot, 4.768, and then just add another 10. Just add another 10 on. That's just the shortcut. Because if you were to move that decimal back five spots, you'd write up the whole number, whatever that number is. You know, four million seven hundred sixty-eight thousand, whatever it is. But you're gonna have to move it back anyway, six spots to put it back to proper scientific notation because they want it properly. They want the decimal line behind the first number one. Okay, last problem of the day. Absolute last problem. We're gonna divide. I think I did one of these yesterday, but this is the last 
last, absolute last one, just to make sure you're comfortable with it. Whatever the numbers are, I think I did kind of a weird number. I was dividing by ruling thing, things yesterday. Uh, let's go with 4,300, and we're going to divide by, let's go 1,250,000. So, we're going to convert to scientific notation. We're going to divide the numbers, and then we'll then we'll convert the answer to proper scientific notation in the end. Because I can pretty much figure out by looking at this thing that these numbers, like the 43, if you think about 43 in the top, and the 125, are not going to divide out perfectly. You're going to get probably a weird decimal, which is fine. We're going to have to convert it. But let's do the thing. Let's convert the top. So, what is the top in scientific notation to start with? So that's moving that decimal over three spots. Good. That's the top. Bottom, please. The bottom of the scientific notation. 1.25 times 10 to the 6. Good. 1.25 times 10 to the 6. All right, now the last part here. Since we got them in scientific notation, we're going to just divide the normal numbers out front. So this is where you're going to need a calculator. So you're going to take the 43. Divide by 1.25. Usually the numbers the book gives you, you can divide in your head. They're usually like, there's a 3 on the bottom or something you can divide by. But I need you to divide just these two numbers here. And I know it's going to be a decimal. It's going to be 0. Point, or I guess actually it won't be. It might be like 3.44. Nice. So 3.44 you said? Yep. Okay. Nice. Didn't think about that. I thought the number was going to be good. Then move it. Okay. Then. The 10 in the back, I, what I always do is just take the top and subtract the bottom. So it's 3 minus 6. Negative 3. Always top minus bottom when you're dividing. That's just how it works. That's your answer. That's side of notation. In fact, we didn't even have to move the decimal. It's imperfect. Now, what that number actually represents, though, is that since it has a negative 3, it's a negative exponent, uh, that means the number is less than $1. So we have to move that decimal back three spots. So this would actually be the real number on a calculator. It's probably what it would display. If it would choose to display that, I don't even know if it would. I don't, I don't know if this one will actually show that, just because if it's past, I think it's like three or four decimal places, it usually doesn't. It usually chooses scientific notation. If you're just detecting the original problem, it might just tell you that. Sometimes. I don't know when. It, just, it chooses to do yeah. it, and I don't understand why it does. It does. Yeah. Did it actually just say the real number for yeah. scientific notation? The real number. Weird. So I don't know why. It's just random. It'll sometimes just show you scientific notation, sometimes it won't. And it doesn't matter what mode you're in. It'll just sometimes choose it. It must be more than three, then. More than three zeros, I guess. Three main coefficients. Okay. Questions on anything we've done today? I know it's kind of a review day. Um, but it's kind of nice to see it again, in case you didn't quite get it, or yesterday was kind of, I kind of went kind of quick yesterday, to go through stuff. Okay, more today, you have the rest of the time to work, which is more than, more than 15 minutes here, which is kind of nice. You can actually work on the class for once. Okay, here's your, here's your problems. Kind of jumped around a little bit. Put some glue in here, and glue is the best working right All right. It is page 28, numbers. Now, this is where I'm going to bounce around a lot. 44, 46, 49, 51, 58, 61, 68, 69, 80. A couple of just normal, um, you know, power or laws of exponents problems where you just multiply things. There's a couple where you divide. There's a couple where you have to distribute powers, and then those last it has to be the last. It's the 80s and 90s. Those are scientific notation problems. 
So they're going to have you convert scientific notation or multiply or divide. So I think the last three or four is multiply and divide. Uh, maybe. Yes, sir. So. All right. Now, due date. It's all important due date. What does it do? That's always what I want to know. Okay. This is going to be a short turnaround. It's due Tuesday. It's a short turnaround. That's, a That's the day you get back. Fourth. That's the fourth. It's the day we're back because Monday you don't have school. So, it's your day off. But I think I'm doing a 15 minutes here in class. It should be kind of fun. They don't take very long. Not 15 minutes, but it doesn't take very long. But short turnaround, I don't like doing that. But if you want to get past this section, move on. Okay. Everyone's going to get about page 15. Everyone's got turn right now. Good. If you had questions, hopefully you came in half so you figured it out, I think.
worker is going to throw these ones away.
Gracias.